Thank you very much. Um, so we get down now to the hard matter, to the actual recommendations that have been made by the working group on risk-free rates so far. So it will become more technical, much more technical than, uh, than so far. Um, we're very happy here to have the uh, chairs or sub um, co-chairs of various of the subgroups of the working group and let me introduce them one by one. So here on my uh, left we have Anna Koshevnikova. Anna is head of the group chief investment officer office at Generali and she is one of the sub-chairs of the subgroup on cash products and derivatives. Then to her left we have Christian Gau. Um, Director Treasury at Deutsche Bank, so he's a co-chair of that same working group. Then on his left we have Markus Schmidtchen, Head of Treasury of KFW, and he is in charge of the subgroup on financial accounting and risk management. And then last but not least, um, Cheka Pardo from uh, BBVA and Global Economics and Public Affairs Department, and he is um, chairing the subgroup on contractual robustness. So thanks very much for being here today. Um, so let's get straight into the topics. Um, Christian, maybe we can start with you and um, yeah, you could give again an overview of the timeline of the transition from the Ionia to the Euro short-term rate and then tell us a bit what it means for the various product types. Yes, okay. So um, I think we have the timeline now. Does it, is that microphone working? Okay. Yes. Uh, we have the timelines now already. Um, uh, in the uh, previous speeches to some extent. So let's have a look at, uh, at, the, at a picture which shows you actually what is going to happen when and also includes some of the recommendations that we have been making already in there. So um, basically you can look at this in two steps. So on the 2nd of October, so what happens is that the publication time of Ionia um, um, will change from um, same day, so same day, end of day, as we all know, to uh, the next morning, uh, 9 o'clock. So, and that publication time is obviously triggered by the implementation or by the go-live of um, Euro STR. Euro STR will therefore be published for the first time on the, uh, in the morning of the 2nd of October. Um, and, at, and in sync, um, Ionia, and you heard that before, will be recalibrated in a way uh, that it equals um, Euro STR plus 8.5 basis points. So that is that step. Uh, that step is basically kind of the initiation of the process. And then um, you already heard that Ionia will cease to be published uh, on the 3rd of January 2002, so end of, uh, to end of 2021. Um, we will have a transition time exactly in between that. Um, so that transition time is uh, obviously what, what we are going to be looking at uh, in more detail in a, in a few minutes. Uh, but what you can see on the graph, and that's uh, important to note, uh, which I will pick up on in a few minutes, um, is uh, already a recommendation when we believe um, the so-called discounting switch date, which is basically kind of the date on which we would like to change the use um, of, uh, uh, or which we recommend, which I'd like to change, but which we recommend to change the use of Ionia uh, as the discounting measure for the valuation of derivatives contracts. Um, um, uh, in, in basically, we recommend to use that time frame, which is basically the second quarter of 2020. Uh, to make that change. And I will explain in a few seconds why we believe that this, that, that recommendation is important to recognize. So on the next page, oh, um, I think the wrong direction here. So this one is right. So let's have a look at a few of the implications. Um, the implications of that change um, um, is um, oh, maybe some of the, uh, of the implications that were, uh, people were worried of that will not come true is it will not uh, affect the publication of the Ionia via the usual distribution channels. Uh, so all the places in Reuters and other market data vendors uh, where you find the Ionia today, they will continue to exist and the Ionia will be published via these channels. Obviously in a recalibrated way, as I said before. The, um, the, um, therefore the, all the Ionia identifiers which you know, which you have incorporated in the systems, they all stay the same. Also, in terms of the um, time series, um, obviously no change as well. The only thing you have that needs to be incorporated by, I think, all market participants is, of course, that the publish, publishing date does not match anymore with the date uh, that Ionia is actually applicable to. Yeah? So it's, uh, therefore, there is a T to T plus one gap in there, and that needs to be incorporated into any buildup of histories. 
market participants are also requested to align their processes with that publication date, of course, which is important as it influences um, settlement procedures, it influences the calculation uh, of, um, of compensation for clients on certain contracts. So all of that needs to be brought in line with the publication time, of course. Uh, especially the settlement procedures needs to be taken into consideration. Um, we have made a recommendation in the report uh, that in order to, to, make, to, to make it applicable to kind of a large area or a large range of uh, different market participants from different areas of this world, especially from the Asian area, uh, it might be recommendable to um, also to have a change from T plus one settlement, which is on the next day after the fixing, um, to uh, T plus two. That is currently being discussed, I, I would like to add. Um, and it depends very much actually on the, uh, on the processes applicable in the individual market, I should say. So therefore, please review that carefully and please review that mainly, especially together with your clients. Um, on the next page, uh, what we can uh, what we are now looking at is um, one, the market segment, uh, the derivatives market segment. So how, to what extent uh, does the union now impact the derivatives market? Um, and um, the first thing that we need to talk about is the so-called floating rate option. It's a term that is being used in ISTA contracts. It basically describes uh, the rate that is uh, applied to the individual derivatives contract, so the underlying rate that is uh, agreed upon. Um, and uh, what is important there to take a look at is uh, to what ex how can you transition from that to Euro STR. Uh, and the two approaches which we came up with in the working group is basically the so-called fallback approach. So you define a fallback for your, uh, for, your Ionia, uh, for, your, for your current Ionia contracts and rely on that fallback from the very point in time on Ionia ceases to be published. Uh, the second alternative is, uh, and that's what we actually recommend, uh, to use is an active transition. So you take a look at your uh, portfolios of Ionia-related contracts and you actively transition them by renegotiating um, the, the, the floating rate uh, and therefore also obviously agreeing with your uh, market or with your clients, respective your counterparties, um, as, to the, um, um, as to the compensation from changing from Ionia to, um, to Euro STR. Um, then the next part, uh, that, or the next segment of, of topics that we typically look at in terms of derivatives is the collateral remuneration. It's, um, uh, and that's, let's keep in mind, um, Ionia, the impact of Ionia to the derivatives market is not so much about uh, the Ionia contracts themselves. It is more about the use of Ionia uh, as the compensation rate, uh, or the price alignment rate, I should say, uh, for price alignment interest uh, for uh, the CSA contracts, uh, for therefore the collateralization um, um, of the individual derivatives contracts. So, and that, um, and that rate, uh, and, and that impact is, I think, the more important one. So therefore you need to, um, F, you need to transition your, um, from the current use of Ionia for the, uh, the construction of discounting curves um, you need to uh, find a transition path for the current use of the compensation rate. Um, so on the discounting, the, the working group has always been recommending to go for clean discounting. So clean discounting means uh, no, different, um, no different indices used for one set of, for, for a CSA set. So that means for a, an agreement that you have with either your central, uh, your, your, uh, your CCP, so your central counterparty platform, uh, and uh, of what well, with your client. Yeah? So we recommend to basically keep an individual CSA set uh, clean in terms of the use of the discounting approach. So that's kind of our recommendation there. So for the compensation, uh, we um, recommend um, that Euro STR is to, to the extent possible always. Let's keep that in mind. Yeah? So uh, we keep uh, the uh, Euro STR flat as a recommendation. And we're using and we uh, recommend cash payments to be made in order to accommodate for the economic uh, uh, value difference. That is a very simple method, and that is chosen for, for a good reason because we believe that all other alternative methods that we were discussing are more complex to implement, and therefore um, that should be the preferred choice. Alternatively, if not possible, 
we um, uh, basically recommend to do the two steps. First, transition to Euro STR plus 8.5, and then at a later point in time, once you can do the final step without frictions, uh, go to Euro STR flat then. Uh, but again, recommendation is to use Euro STR uh, right from the start as far as possible. Discounting switch date, we, I mentioned that already. That is basically the date on which the use of Euro STR should be, uh, uh, Euro STR should be used to create discounting curves uh, for um, the evaluation or the valuation of uh, derivatives contracts. Uh, and we recommend, so what we recommend is a big bang approach for the CCPs as far as possible. So obviously that is subject to execution now and it is currently being discussed and uh, being um, one of the important topics we discuss in the, uh, in, in the working group. Um, so therefore, let's say as far as possible. And then, because we believe uh, everything else would be too much of, an, um, of a coordination effort and actually not executable, we, uh, we recommend that the bilateral market uh, would then follow in a phased approach. So that the CCPs would kick it off and the bilateral market would take it from there. So um, also, please keep in mind to avoid the use of uh, um, so-called dual strap curves in projection and discounting. That is really important because that could lead to all sorts of valuation questions uh, when you determine the corresponding value together with your clients and agree the corresponding payments. One final remark on derivatives is that uh, for, um, for valuation of options on derivatives with physical settlement, Keep in mind that after the discounting switch date, now, now the option basically refers to uh, a Euro SDR discounted derivative. So that might be triggering a revaluation and compensation in itself. So keep that in mind. That is the side effect, which you need to keep in mind uh, when dealing with uh, portfolios like that. So I pass on to uh, Anna for um, the second part of our presentation. Thank you, Christian. So, um what about uh, cash products impacted by this reform? Um, the mandate of our subgroup was to analyze product by product and from valuation operational standpoint, um, how um, actually the market or what kind of recommendations we could provide market participants with in order to transition from Ionian to EURSTR in a smoothed way. Um, first of all, we analyzed what kind of products uh, within the cash universe are actually exposed to Ionia and will be exposed to this reform. Um, so, of course, I mean, we found out that we have securities or commercial papers in Europe referencing Ionia. Of course, investment funds, because investment funds, like, for example, money market funds invest in uh, money market instruments and also in derivatives. Um, and, of course, loans, uh, bilateral loans, or for example, swing line loans, and also cash accounts or cash deposits. So the universe of these ca cash products is quite wide. And what I would like to highlight is that compared to derivatives, um, cash products uh, have very often different infrastructures, different systems, IT systems, different legal frameworks. So it's actually the transition could require more effort for cash products compared to derivatives. And this is something that should be taken into account by, by the market. Um, apart from the operational um, complications, what Christian was mentioning before, actually the change is the publication date uh, because this um, impacts uh, all settlement procedures that we have also for cash products. Um, we also uh, found out uh, that there are other, um, other aspects that should be managed, especially in the transition phase, that we are going to, fa to, to, to manage and to handle in the next months. Um, of course, first of all, regarding securities, uh, we strongly suggested not to uh, issue new securities referencing Keonia. So uh, we strongly suggest to start issuing new securities indexed Euro STR rate, so the new rate. Of course, <clears throat> it means that also infrastructure systems and IT systems should be able to manage this. So should be able to uh, trade, uh, to buy, to issue, and also accounting systems should be ready to uh, handle these new, uh, new securities. 
Um, regarding the investment funds, uh, uh, as I was mentioning, investment funds are largely, largely exposed to this reform. Um, first of all, uh, we uh, need to remember about the net asset value calculation. So it's, it's going to be impacted, especially by the change uh, in the publication date. So again, the move from T to T plus one. And uh, then, uh, of course, the market also um, should consider the legal, legal aspects. So uh, as we know, we, in some funds, we have EONI as a benchmark, uh, used as a benchmark, or as a hurdle rate to calculate the performance fee. So this is something that, again, should be analyzed and should be managed in the next months in order to transition from EONI to the new rate, EURSTR. Um, Regarding, again, I mean, in general, what I would like to highlight is that many cash products are uh, retail products. And uh, the communication aspects is very, very relevant in, in this case. So education of your clients, communication towards your clients is really important, especially for uh, this part of, of, of the market. Uh, of the market. Um, just uh, the last remark uh, regarding the loans uh, that uh, especially in this case we're talking bilateral loans or there could be infragroup loans or syndicated loans, so swing line loans, especially exposed to Ionia. In this case, uh, we also would like to highlight the working group that any compensation mechanism should be analyzed uh, between uh, the counterparties in order to, again, to manage the transition from union to the new Euro-STR rate. Um, another uh, aspect that we uh, needed to work on within our subgroup uh, was to analyze um, evaluation, evaluation aspects. So how this reform is going to impact our evaluation systems and evaluation models in particular. Uh, so, sorry. <laughs> yeah. And uh, here we, we are talking about the models. So what kind of models are exposed to this reform or are going to be affected by this reform? And of course, again, when we looked at the universe of the models, we, we can mention interest rate curve construction models, um, also term structure um, models or uh, discounting cash flow models. So the universe is quite wide. Uh, and uh, what is important to, to highlight is that, of course, the structure of the models is not going to be impacted itself. But what is important to consider is, that, of course, input data parameters and especially discounting curves. So the discounting curves is something that uh, should be managed very carefully. In general, uh, what we also recommended as a working group, uh, and especially subgroup five, is to design a transition plan for the models affected by this reform. Because it's not only uh, depends on the 2nd of October of this year, so actually the date of publication of the new rate, but it's, it it's also depends on how the market is going to evolve in the next months, in the next years, and when actually, actually in this case, we will be able to build up, for example, the discounting, new discounting curve to be used in these models, and when actually these models should, should use these curves uh, in, um, uh, in the, in the internal, internal systems and internal processes. So this is something that uh, should be planned. Um, Regarding the discounting curve itself, uh, um, of course, the first question was how a new discounting curve based on the new rate can be constructed. Um, after a lot of discussion, actually, our suggestion was to use this fixed spread, 8.5 basis points, in order to be uh, able to build up uh, the new curve. So, it means that already starting from the 2nd of October, you can build a new curve based on, uh, on the Ionia, Ionia curve. 
Uh, of course, um, it doesn't mean that this curve will exist for, for the next years and for uh, even during the transition period because, uh, of course, the market, especially the new euro market, is going to, to evolve, to, to develop in the next months. And it means that it's important to observe that market, to understand when the market gets more liquidity, and when actually it will be possible to move from uh, this uh, euro star uh, or Ionia based euro star curve to a real euro star curve. So, based on liquid, built up based on liquid instruments and uh, uh, reliable, reliable data. Um, so, this is something that, uh, of course, should be, uh, should be monitored, should be planned for, for the next months. Um, another aspect that I would like to highlight here, and uh, um, it also was stressed uh, by, by the working group, is that, I mean, it, it, it may happen uh, that during the transition period we uh, will need to manage different curves. So, Ionia curve, uh, Euro star curve based on Ionia minus 8.5 bips, uh, and uh, then also monitor the situation and to start building a new Euro star curve. So uh, basically, it means that at a certain point of time, we need to consider that we will be somehow constrained to manage four different curves. Uh, of course, this could put additional uh, requirements to our systems, to our infrastructure, uh, infrastructures, to our processes and procedures. Um, Another point I would like to highlight is that uh, if we talk about the Ionia discounting curve, is also the change in the curve is going to impact Euribor parse swap rate curves. And uh, uh, another aspect to be considered is that um, especially we need to uh, be careful about nonlinear derivatives because um, the switching uh, uh, of the PI rate uh, from Ionia flat to the Eurostar flat is going to impact that. So this is something that should be um, analyzed carefully. Um, so that's all about, about the models. Just <laughs> the last word. Uh, in uh, August, in particular on the 19th of August of this year, we published <coughs> sub 5 and the ECB uh, published uh, the report on how to, um, how to manage or what could be the best way to manage the transition from Union to Euro STR for derivatives and cash products. Uh, so you can, uh, oh, we strongly invite you to read that report and uh, because there are a lot of aspects uh, not discussed today but covered in the report and a lot of details that you can find probably useful for you. Uh, so we, we invite you to, to consult. Thanks very much, Anna and Christian. So that's a lot of um, material to digest already, I think. So please also refer to these documents. And we will, of course, also make online the presentations of today, as I see some of you taking pictures, I suppose, already in the course of the day. Um, so you can refer to that. And I also want to say that at the end of this panel, we will have uh, the possibility for you to ask questions. Yeah. So if, please already think a bit ahead whether there are any details you would like to um, to ask the panelists about. Yeah, with that, I hand over to the next speaker, Markus Schmidtchen, chair of the subgroup on risk accounting uh, on risk and accounting issues, and he will enlighten us with the work and the recommendations of his group. Yeah, thank you very much, Cornelia. But I would like to start with a question. So, what's the name of the new animal? So, uh, we started with Esther. Then I thought uh, the official name is Euro STR, and today I heard that's ESTR. So, who's who's right? <laughs> It's Euro short-term rate. And <laughs> okay, but that's a bit that's too long. So. <laughs> you can say Euro STR. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm more used to Euro <laughs> STR, so I, 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 I use the same name as the second Stephen did, so I, I hope that's, that's, that's okay with you. <laughs> all right. So, um, yeah, first of all, I, I, I wanted to say that, I mean, 
um, there was a kind of overlap between the subgroup five and the subgroup six. So, and we, we, we have already heard it because you had a look into models, valuations, compensation payments as well. Uh, but your focus were much, was much more on, the, on a product specific level. And within the subgroup um, six, so the subgroup I'm presenting, accounting risk management, we tried to stay more on a, on, a, on a macro level, on a generic level, especially to give advice to institutions that um, yeah, um, are not, let's say, on the forefront of the, of the, of the transition, yeah? to, uh, to, to, to make them aware what's going on and what functions need to be considered when setting up a, um, um, a benchmark transition program. And um, the, the, the speakers already mentioned, so the um, complicated issue is that when we talk about uh, the transition from Ionia to Euro SDR is not uh, only the transition of a floating rate option, so the overnight rate is heavily used also in the derivative space. Um, price alignment interest, we spoke about it, uh, but it's also highly relevant for, for the valuation, uh, for risk management purposes, pricing purposes, but also um, financial accounting purposes, of course. And that's also the reason why um, yeah, it's not only about new products, it's also about how to adapt uh, the system infrastructure, risk management uh, systems, but also accounting systems and so on. And therefore, I would like to emphasize what uh, Stephen II has said. Don't underestimate this transition. If you haven't started yet, it's really time to do so. And um, on the first slide here, we have um, uh, put some, 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 some risk types that, that might be affected depending, depending on the individual exposure of a financial institution or of a, or of a corporate to the overnight rate. And, um, and, and we see that uh, it is nearly the whole um, uh, risk landscape that, that might be affected. So there are, of course, the uh, obvious financial risks that are going to change, valuation risk. We spoke about the adaption of valuation systems, of various vari va um, valuation systems. We might see changes in market risk metrics and in, in the, um, the uh, value at risk calculations, stressed VAR calculation, for example, or interest rate sensitivities, depending on uh, the institution specific setup. And then we also have um, yeah, so called uh, second order financial risks, counterparty credit risk, liquidity risks. Um, that might be, uh, might be affected, especially in the, in the space also of, of derivatives, depending if you have many uncollateralized derivatives uh, contracts outstanding or also collateralized. But also non-financial risks are uh, affected. We started to speak about it, and we will hear from Checker about it. Legal risk, for example. If you have got uh, financial contracts um, outstanding with the maturities exceeding end of 2021, um, and that are uh, based on, on Aeonia, then, I mean, you have to start to renegotiate it and to, to transfer these um, uh, contracts within the next two, two years to, to a new rate. Then we have technical risk factors, uh, process disruption risk, IT risk, model risk that are in close connection to the adaption of, uh, of IT systems. And then we have, of course, also kind of reputational risk if something is going wrong in this very, very important transition period, then it might be possible that it creates negative headlines. Uh, another uh, aspect here heavily debated in the financial industry is also client communication. I mean, how should you communicate this transition to your clients? I mean, of course, it depends quite a lot on what your concrete business here is, but this is potentially, of course, also a source of uh, reputational risk if uh, the clients don't feel um, it, it, that they get uh, enough information. Within the um, transition, a very, very important aspect is, of course, the adaption of IT systems. And uh, with this slide, I just want to highlight that um, generally, or for, for at least uh, quite a lot of financial institutions, a whole set of IT systems is impacted. And uh, knowing that the adaption of IT systems is very, very time consuming, that if you haven't started to adapt the systems or if you even haven't set up w what you want to achieve and how you are exposed to the, to the overnight rate, then it's really here time. And it usually starts with the, with the, with the, with the market data that uh, needs to be fitted in a, in a data market database uh, based on this data. Uh, lots of applications are running, trading and booking system, pricing, valuation engines, and 
uh, these uh, values are then also used for other applications such, a, such as collateral management for accounting purposes and so on. And at the end of this value chain, there's of course the, the, the generation of uh, the financial reporting or the, the risk met matrices, risk, uh, risk management. So have a look here on the adaption of the IT systems. It is usually the most uh, time consuming part um, in the, in the um, transition process. And that were already um, some key messages with regards to the risk management uh, um, aspects. So um, not the main part um, because of the lack of the time, but we are going to publish a report. Uh, I expect uh, the report to be ready within the next one or two weeks and there, we, there we, you will find plenty of more recommendations. But it, as I said, due to the time limit, uh, I will leave it here um, um, on this information level. So then I would like to continue with uh, potential impacts on financial accounting. And again, also this is highly institute spe specific. It depends on um, yeah, how you have set up your financial accounting. Um, but many, for many institutions, the overnight rate is, is, is highly relevant due to its crucial role for, for valuations, especially if uh, banks are operating, for example, in a multi-curve environment the base curve is the Ionia, and if Ionia um, ceases to exist and you have to implement uh, Euro SDR, then it uh, might certainly have an impact on the financial accounting. And um, we have analyzed especially three channels uh, through which uh, the impact uh, might come from. When I start from the uh, right side, so IIS 19, IIS uh, 36, and so on, these are standards. Um, uh, where discount rates play a pivotal role for the, for the valuation of financial assets and uh, financial liabilities, for example, em the calculation of employee benefits, impairment of assets, provisions, and so on. If their um, present value creation depends on the overnight rate and the overnight rate switches, you will see an impact here. In the middle, you will find the IFRS 13, uh, which might also be relevant. Uh, and the IFRS 13 defines requirements for measuring financial assets and liabilities at fair value through profit and loss. And there's a hierarchy how you have to um, derive your fair value. For very, very liquid instruments, you take um, market prices. So that's the, the highest uh, liquidity level for less liquid um, uh, assets, you take market-based prices, so you got some observable information in a relatively liquid market, and if there's uh, yeah, a, a big lack of liquidity, then you, then you make model prices. So the derivation here highly depends on the, on the liquidity of, of the financial instrument. It is fair to assume that if we speak about um, Ionia instruments, that we will see over the transition period a decreasing liquidity so that it might um, lead to a situation in which you have to change your level and that might ha have of course also an impact on the, on, the, on the value and then if there's a value differential um, you have to recognize it in the profit and loss. And the most uh, prominent impact might come out of IFRS 9 and IRS 39 that is, uh, these are the um, uh, well-known hedge accounting standards and uh, they are heavily debated in the financial industry. Why? Um, because uh, if um, hedge accounting relationships um, uh, discontinue, that might impact the profit or loss quite a lot, would create uh, volatility with many negative side effects, so which is something not, uh, not really um, useful to support the, the a successful transition. And, that's, um, and the problem is that the, an interest rate um, transition might impact these standards quite a lot. So there are questions like, is a switch from, from Ionia to Euro SDR a substantial modification contracts or not? So this is something that needs to be answered. There are questions about uh, hedge effectivity. Yeah? Is, is, is the effectivity uh, decreasing of a, of, a, of a hedge? How likely are uh, the probability of the future cash flows and so on? So many, many open questions, and that's also the reason uh, why um, we as a working group, but also many other um, working groups in the, in the financial uh, space has approached the accounting standard board to request for some reliefs. 
And uh, the general guidance here should, should be, in our view, that the discontinuation of hatching relationships should be avoided as long as this discontinuation is solely caused by a transition from one rate to another, uh, because it wouldn't impact actually the, um, um, yeah, the risk management strategy, or it wouldn't reflect a change in the risk management strategy of a bank. And the good news is, and that's my last slide, that the IISB here is, 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 is acting. It's, 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 it's pretty good, so that uh, they set up a, 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 a program how to deal with um, the IBO reforms, not only here the Ionia Euro STR reform, but also other IBO reforms that are ongoing. And uh, it is expected that they are amending uh, the IRS 39 and IRFS 9 uh, in two phases, in a two-phase approach. And, they, and that they are providing reliefs to, um, yeah, to, to hedge accounting requirements, which would, of course, be in, in favor of, uh, of the market and be very, very helpful. So that's what I mentioned uh, with regards to the accounting section. Um, we have already um, um, sent a letter to the ISB. I mentioned it. It's on the ECB website. We are currently in the state of preparing or finalizing the risk management report. And I expect the report on financial uh, accounting to be ready end of October. Thanks very much, Marcus. And then we go right uh, to the Contractual Robustness Working Group and check hey, out thank, thank you. Thank you, Cornelia. Uh, today, it has been pointed out in many, in many occasions that uh, Eonia will modify its methodology uh, next week. But more important, Eonia uh, will uh, be discontinued in December uh, 2021. To this end, the working group published in July this year uh, the EONIA two-year STR legal action plan with the objective of uh, proposing a set of recommendations to uh, ensure a smooth legal transition from EONIA to two-year STR. There are three main uh, recommendations. Uh, the first one, it was pointed out uh, before, uh, the working group recommends all market participants to start using EURO STR as soon as possible as soon as operational feasible. The second one, in those cases uh, where new contracts are still referencing EONIA and maturing beyond December 2021 or fall under the scope of the BMR, uh, market participants need to include uh, fallback provisions in these uh, contracts. And for legacy contracts, and in particular those legacy contracts maturing beyond December, uh, December 2021, market participants uh, should uh, consider two options. Either uh, replace EONIA or uh, introduce uh, fallback provisions in legacy contracts. To this end, uh, the working group uh, officially uh, recommends uh, Euro STR plus 8.5 uh, basic points as a uh, the ONIA uh, fallback rate uh, for all pros and purposes. These recommendations are more or less clear. Here, the, the main challenge is how to introduce robust fallbacks in contrast or how to uh, amend uh, the legacy portfolio. I will uh, briefly outline uh, these uh, recommendations by, by asset classes. For derivative transactions, the ISDA benchmark supplement and the ISDA benchmark supplement protocol provide a convenient way for all market participants to introduce fallback provisions in new contracts and to amend uh, the legacy derivative uh, transactions. In addition, uh, last Friday, ISDA uh, announced the introduction of a specific EONIA uh, fallback provisions in their ISDA definitions, which I, I think it would help uh, all market participants to enhance transparency and uh, legal certainty about uh, how will be the transition from EONIA to ESSER for derivative uh, transactions. But ISDA is not the, the unique uh, master agreement uh, used in, in Europe. We have also the Spanish uh, master agreement, the French master agreement, the German master agreement. So in this sense, uh, the working group recommends the sponsors of these uh, master agreements to uh, amend their agreements to introduce uh, fallback provisions, and therefore, and then all market participants to, to use these, uh, these uh, master agreements. 
but uh, the working group not only uh, provide gives some recommendations to market participants, they are also for public authorities. And in particular, I would like to highlight one recommendation uh, in order uh, to clarify that the amending legacy transactions does not entail margin or clearing obligations under the EMIR regulation. Uh, if uh, with this clarification would help all market participants to start uh, thinking on how to, to, to transition. This is in relation to uh, derivative uh, transactions. Thinking on collateral agreements. Uh, collateral agreements deserve a particular uh, attention. There are three main facts that uh, need to take into account thinking in the transition uh, from Neonia to EURSTR. The first one is uh, collateral agreements uh, do not generally have a termination date. They are not under the scope of the BMR and they do not usually have uh, fallback provisions. After several discussions uh, in, the, in the legal subgroup and with the working group, the, the working group agreed that the introduction of, uh, of fallback provisions in, in new collateral agreements would uh, help and would enhance transparency and legal certainty open the cessation of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of EONIA in December 2021. To this end, uh, the, the working group asked uh, the market association, the sponsors of, uh, of collateral agreements, uh, of standardized collateral agreements, to develop, develop solutions to include uh, fallback, uh, fallbacks in new collateral agreements and to identify options to modify the legacy portfolio. Then if we move on to, to cash products, and when I, and when I mention cash, cash products referencing EONIA are mainly certificates of deposits, commercial paper, uh, repos, so all of these, uh, the majority of, uh, of uh, CAS uh, contracts referencing EONIA has a short uh, dated maturities. So probably most of them will, will roll over before December 2021. So I come back to the first recommendation at the beginning. They, all market participants will start using your STR uh, as soon as possible. But in those cases that were CAS products are still using EONIA and material beyond December 2021, we need to bear in mind that uh, for syndicate loans, the Loan Market Association provides uh, a standard market documentation with, uh, with robust fallback provisions that market participants may wish to, to apply. And also the, the working group uh, published uh, two alternative templates, a fallback template that market participants may wish to to apply in their, uh, in their new uh, CAS uh, contra contracts. And moving to, to the legacy portfolio of CAS uh, products, we need to bear in mind that the, the use of is the style protocol to amend legacy portfolio uh, is neither a market standard nor, nor feasible, feasible for, for CAS products. To this end, uh, uh, the, if there is any legacy cash product maturing beyond December 2021, its amendment or cancellation should be done through a bilateral renegotiation. To this end, uh, the working group also published uh, an amendment agreement template that uh, market participants may wish to use on a voluntary basis, of course, in their initial discussions with their parties to modify uh, the amendment uh, agreements. Just to finalize, um, all of this, uh, I briefly outlined the, the legal action plan published e in July. On the ECB web, uh, website, you also may find may found the consultation paper published uh, in May, the feedback received from more than 60 uh, individual uh, responses from all market participants and the final recommendations. Overall, there are more than 130 pages analyzing the, uh, the legal implications of the, in the transition from EONIA to EURO-STR. Try to be 
quickly. Thanks to very give much. Some time. So again, a lot of information that we have here from you. So you see that the move from one benchmark to the other, even though we are talking of an overnight unsecured to another overnight unsecured benchmark, it's still quite complex and there are many different aspects that have to be taken into account. Now the choice of the working group and then Amy to change the methodology of Ionia to become a tracker of the euro short term rate probably helped in the transition, but as you outlined before, it still, um, yeah, it still remains a very complex task. So um, you should all have started the preparations for the transition, obviously, but, um, and, uh, but, but I hope that, um, that, that you are all on track. But uh, if not, maybe before we open the floor to, to questions from your side, I can ask one question. So next week we will have the Euro short term rate. One obvious implication for everybody is that the timing of publication of Ionia changes to the next morning. But what is in your view like the first step that those who haven't prepared anything yet, the first step that people should take? Do you have any recommendation on that? And meanwhile, please think of questions. I mean, there's not much time left, <laughs> so to say. So I, I, in, this, in this special case, I don't really know uh, what, what other options uh, uh, are than taking, taking the Ionia that is, uh, that is published at, 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 the, at, the specific, uh, or, yeah, at the specific date. And I mean, I know that this, uh, this topic, T, T plus one, is heavily debated in the, in the financial industry, but my perception is here also that I mean, the answer to the question is, is, is very, very difficult because it depends quite a lot uh, about what function you're talking, pricing function, for example, a risk management function, or also accounting, then it might also be um, product specific. I mean, there's also an ongoing debate uh, uh, between, as far as I know, also clearing houses, what, what the right approach is. And, um, and it, it depends on so many questions that uh, my perception is that there hasn't established uh, a market standard so far. And I'm aware of that there are, of course, institutions out there that are taking the Ionia that is published on the relevant side. So this is a rather pragmatic approach. But, um, but I mean, this, um, this transition can only be a success if, if, if we are all pragmatic in a sense and not dogmatic. I spoke about uh, the adaption of uh, hedge accounting standards, for example. There are also the ISB is quite pragmatic and uh, is supportive. And, uh, and we have many fields uh, uh, and complex questions that are in conjunction with, uh, with um, the division of uh, discount curves, for example, or also the application of historical data, which is a big problem if you, if you, if you take, a, take a dogmatic approach. So, so I, that's why I would recommend in such a situation, I mean, um, keep, uh, t take, take the Ionia that is published uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the current date on the, on the, spe on the specific website, yeah. Yes, I, I, I would add, I guess, a more a high level message in this sense, because the first one is to realize that Eonia, uh, the discontinuation of Eonia is not a possibility, it's a fact. So you need to realize and also to explain in your institution, in all levels of your institution, that the Eonia will no longer be operational since uh, from 2021. Uh, so, and this, and you have to explain this to all, all your, in your institutions. And then the second part is, uh, to carry out on the stock taken and in which systems are you using Eonia, which are your contracts, how, uh, how which uh, contracts you have uh, and which of them mature beyond December 2021 because those are the critical ones that you need to manage in the next two, uh, two, two years. And, and, and start preparing to, to use your SDR because you need to adapt your systems, your, you need to develop new contractual agreements, you need to develop a new valuation. So even if uh, the EURSTR will be published next week, if you are not internally prepared, and your compliance uh, team approve all your, the new processes, you cannot use it. Yeah. Thank you. I would definitely also really um, 
align myself to, um, the opera uh, to my operations department. Yeah? So kind of all those departments dealing with the execution of the settlements of all those payments being related to all the contracts related to Ionia and have them um, and, and, and clarify what needs to change in terms of when is this and when is the Ionia available, so after the change in the publication date, and can they process it, and have they enabled themselves to use that information, which will now come in later, to process all, uh, all the payments afterwards. I think that's kind of the immediate effect this has on any of those contracts. So, of course, that should have been dealt with already some time ago, yeah, so I understand that a few days left might not be kind of changed a lot, yeah, but, but anyway, that is basically what comes immediately across my mind, yeah, so ensure that you are actually able to execute still uh, and, um, and that you are able to record the incoming information as to the benchmark uh, if, uh, uh, applied to the correct day, actually. And also what we didn't really talk about a lot here today, but um, this is now part of regulatory reporting. Yeah? So kind of, uh, MMSR is now feeding uh, ESTA. Yeah? So from that, uh, as this is the concept basically which we're applying there. So therefore all the banks being subject to MMSR, uh, they become a deemed submitter. Yeah? So they should keep that in mind as well, because I, 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 I remember that there was the one or the other question that came up. So uh, therefore, by definition, they are submitted. So therefore, that should also be kept in mind. Thanks, Christian. Just one word from my side. Um, what is important I would like to highlight is to, that it's not just limited to the 2nd of October, the transition. So it's really important to actually understand how you're going to be impacted on the 2nd of October and uh, what actually Christian was saying before, uh, especially regarding the settlement, settlement process. Mm -hmm. but the transition is not limited only to that date because there are a lot of a lot of activities on legal side or risk management side accounting side but even on the on the settlement itself that should be performed uh, over the next next months so actually in the next two years and uh, the bulk of the activities uh, is really important and some of them some of those changes are really challenging for all market participants Thanks a lot. So.